guys. Um, today I'm going to show you uh, uh, the end of my project here. That's all this paving that has been done uh, at my home, and uh, we try to get people round to give quotes for this. Three people turned up and uh, disappeared. Never saw them again because they obviously didn't like the look of it. This is all about cutting internal and external angles in hard limestone. Uh, patio paving so uh, when I went on YouTube to try and find anyone doing a good example of it I couldn't find it and it, I, I am sort of self-taught but I'm hoping that what I've learned and, and taught myself will hopefully help someone else so let's have a look at come around here and a lot of these are just straight cuts, but slight curved cuts there. But where I couldn't get any help at all was like these cuts, for example, these internal cuts in the limestone for this well, internal cut for these edging, and finally, I've just finished it here. A decorative circle for the patio here so let's go to the workstation and see how I did it okay so uh, this is what I call my workstation that I set up to do all these cuts with um, I went on eBay first thing no, forget the saw for now first thing I decided the best place to cut was on a normal pallet um, the reason for that is the, the weight of these 22 mil limestone slabs are very heavy, but the pallet supports them well if you, if you use the slots in the pallet to support the cuts. So you come through one and you haven't got anything falling off and, and uh, causing a problem whether you're holding a very heavy saw, a very dangerous saw. On, my, on the pallet, um, uh, I've made this backstop which is deliberately, it's just got the one solid screw in it, quite a heavy screw, but I'm able to adjust it. So if I do want to cut an angle, say through there, for example, or through there, the, the, the um, backstop there is just st to stop the uh, slab suddenly jolting backwards. And I also additionally support it with just a, a simple clamp like that. So it's all held quite firm. Health and safety experts may say that's completely insufficient, but it worked for me and like I say, I've done quite a few hundred cuts now and uh, haven't had a problem with that system. I run the tarpaulin underneath the pallet. There's a lot of water involved as you're gonna see and there's a lot of chip-ins and things like that. They fall on there and you don't wanna be walking around on them so I empty them occasionally into the bucket and it just keeps things tidy and probably a bit safer because you're not tripping over all the offcuts. All right, eBay and bought this little beauty, 100 pounds. It was an absolute dog. It's a uh, still TS350, it had done far too much work. Fantastic saw in its own right. However, um, yeah, I had to rebuild it, I put a new it's had a new crank, it's had new crank seals, been right through it and it, it now runs all right apart from the, <laughs> the, the, uh, the stop switch doesn't work so I just put my finger over the exhaust to kill it off at the end of the cut. Very good saw, the only thing I had to do uh, for this job is fit the water supply and I bought this cheap uh, water supply kit, 22 quid, very good apart from where the hose connects on and this this bit here was plastic and the hose just flew off all the time totally inadequate and the wrong bit of hose what wrong connector was used so I've tried all sorts uh, tried to find a plastic uh, connector that worked that did the job nothing worked it was all wrong thread wrong this wrong that and in the end what I did I bought a double-ended hose connector that uh, I cut that, that bit off and then I used that bit and silver soldered that to various reducers from the plumbing shop 
and I'll just so silver solder them all together. That went into the standard tap and we don't have a problem now. So that was my own fix. I, I feel sorry for anyone who struggles along with the standard connector because they're rubbish, absolute rubbish. And um, if you can get, if you can find someone to silver solder that little system up, that will do you well and serve the life of the machine. Okay. okay. So that's the Steel 350. It's got a diamond blade, 300 mil diamond blade on it. Um, I've used one blade for that entire job and this is just the start of the second blade. So they do do really well, the blades, as long as I suspect you use a water supply on them. Don't ever try and do this dry. The dust is horrendous and um, the blade wears out much faster. The cuts are really hot and so it chips out a lot on the thing. Forget it, if you just don't do it uh, dry. You will just suffocate in the dust. Health and safety is a nightmare. You can't see what you're doing. And I would really not recommend that you go down that route. Um, saw works well. You just need to clean out the air filter quite a few times because obviously it's kicking all this crap back and it will go into the back of the air filter. You just clean it out every now and then. And touch wood, that's done a lot of work for me now. Uh, everything will be all right. The other things we need is a brush just to sweep all the junk off so your, your um, stone is well supported and not rocking on any bits of chippings and things like that. So have a brush nearby and clean it off regularly, put your chippings in there and um, for smaller bits, I didn't show you, for the smaller bits, smaller cuts, I put a notch in the pallet so when I was cutting the little sets like that, put my coffee down, you could just clamp that up and some of the really small bits you can go a bit further up and get them clamped. I was just finding that the clamp was too far back and you're just on the edge of the set without that notch so it's a handy little fix just to get you a bit more support for that. All right, okay. A um, bit of health and safety, ear protection, essential. Um, and uh, every time I stop a cut, I switch the saw off, hang the ears on there, so you remind, remember to put them on every time. Eye protection, essential, obviously. I put wellies on because all the crap that fires back, you end up with white legs all the way up. And, and, and you're working water, so get yourself a pair of those if you're doing a lot of cuts. Otherwise you end up with soaking wet feet. There's mud everywhere. It just saves the day. And marking out. Um, I've got two scores of thought on here. A fairly simple line, you can, you can coat with pencil, but the water will wash off your marking line quite quickly if you don't get your scribe line in quickly. And then I went to Sharpie. They're much better because they don't wash off. However, you are left with uh, uh, quite a difficult thing to remove at the end of the day. It does stain your limestone and you need to make sure you've cut every bit off. But I prefer the Sharpie in the end. Okay, um, we're just talking about marking out. When the hose is on, you only need very little water pressure. Do not give it a full whack, turn your tap on. Keep it regulated at the tap. What I tend to do is connect it up, switch on the supply, and you can hear it hissing on the blade. Um, you, need, you need enough water that you can see, so you can see what you're doing, but don't drown yourself. If you look at your cut, and I'll tell you now, because it's difficult to speak where the saw's going, but if you look at your cut as you do it, in the trench of the cut, you should have plenty of lubrication there. If your cut is dry, and you can look into the trench as the saw's going up and down, you haven't got enough water. So use that as a gauge. Make sure the trench of the cut is nice and wet um, to lubricate the blade. And if it's dry, just increase the pressure a little bit. But be careful not to put too much pressure through the system. All right. So um, this is an off cut. This is a bit I got wrong for that big circle patio around there. And I'll just um, show you an external cut and an internal cut to give you a rough idea. And um, like I say, it's practice. Um, so if we draw the external 
in the sharpie or the pencil whatever you prefer but we'll say we're going to go for something like that and then the internal cut that's not very good is it sorry about that there we go do something like that just to give you an idea now what i started doing and i started doing wrong was trying to cut it out as i was going don't do that um, your first job is to put in what I call the scribe cut and just get the saw running nice and fast before you start because you don't get the, get the engine running at a nice even stage and this is the only bit of artistry in it is you've got to hold that saw and guide that cut first that scribe cut needs to be smooth and as accurate as you can possibly get it don't stop just do try and do one very shallow little scribe cut and you can work to that the the pen then is irrelevant just work to your scribe cut and the pen mark or the pencil mark is simply for you to do that okay 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 um just before we start um we've set up the water supply now i've got my lad to turn the tap so i've got i think i've got enough water supply if you hear that hissing away Probably even need a little bit less than that, but um, at least we're not going to underdo it. Now when we're cutting, I'm going to just tell you, what I try and do is, if I do a straight cut, and I would use the slat in the, in the pallet if I was doing it, but just to show you, I try and angle the saw blade at that sort of angle, because when we grout, it, it helps key the grout in. If you have it straight or angle it the other way, the grout's ready to pop up. So that's just a little little thing I thought would be a good idea. Just to, all my straight cuts or any cuts, just angle slightly so the grout is held and held nicely and less uh, less tempted to pop up at a later date. All right, and I'm just going to show you how I do that scribe cut. Make sure you don't stand on your your hose. Uh, and make sure that I run it between my legs like that and I mean the saws are really heavy the 14 15 kilos and if you're cutting all day it's a lot of, a lot of work so I, I tend to brace my elbows on my knees get get a nice stance like that and I just do that would be my scribe cut something like that like I say just try and do it in a nice even flow like that just to get that scribe done. And when your knees can come into play to support your arm, then use them, squat down a bit, and away it goes like that, okay? It's gonna be quite a difficult cut. The external one's much more straightforward. It's internal ones that are difficult. All right, so I'm gonna get geared up now, and we'll run up the saw and try and hopefully show you how it's done. Go. Okay, well, we're about ready to cut. I've, I've clamped it, I've used the backstop, clamped it, this is a bit we're going to cut out. I might have to adjust it as we get near because I can see it's quite near the edge of the pallet, but the pallet's cheap. Um, and a nice little stand because otherwise the blade tends to rub in. Saws a pig, so I've had to start it up. Once it's warm, it's fine, but it takes ages to warm up. I've no idea why. Choke works, but hey ho, that's the way it is. All right, so we're ready to start doing that scribe cut as I described. It's going to be quite difficult for me, but I'll do my best, and um, we'll go from there. I turn the water on. There we are. Now do the scribe cut. Try a nice one, nice flowing motion. Okay, so I'll just try to set that in a nice flow of motion. See my trench is nice and full of water, so the blades are going to be cool and last much longer. But now we can ignore all the pen marks because we've got a scribe cut. It also tends to be 
even better than the pen mark. So now what we got to do is remove the meat of that, remove all the waste out of that, which with a 300 mil blade to try and remove the meat out of a, a curve like that has to be done in sections. And uh, you work your side, side cut as a, as a guide, but what I, what I have been doing is doing cuts like that, like that, and just taking out the main meat of the cut by doing that. So we'll have a go at that and uh, talk about when we get close to the, the scribe line to finish off. Okay, you might. Okay, we've got rid of the, the worst of the meat now and we're just going to work much closer to the scribe line making sure that we don't go over it to get that nice finish. I'm also going to work to try and get that undercut that I talked about. Um, as I get close to the line I use what I call the back cut. I don't go forward because it tends to dig in. I sweep using the back cut to tidy up the last bit. Um, and hopefully we'll have a nice cut. Okay, ready?
Okay, so there's the worst of the meat now. Trial and error. Now this is where I'm going to just show that back cut method, just to tidy up, um, get a nice smooth line, uh, just to finish off. All right. Don't be tempted to go forward with the blade because you can dig in. Don't forget, the deeper you go with the blade, the more you've got to accommodate greater length. So try and use the end of the blade. You're only accommodating that, which is going to be less likely to damage your cup. If we get... Okay, so that's hard work, but you do a few of these. You can see we we'll roughly get it, you know, you can trim it up and tune it up as much as you like, just smooth it with the back cut. Try and keep the revs nice and level if you can on the saw, and uh, you'll get there. And uh, I hope that's uh, some sort of demonstration on internal cuts on limestone. Uh, I'm sure health and safety people would have a big problem with it but that's we're all self-taught here so good luck uh, I think you get the idea I've just um, had a last little tune up gently stroking back stroking all the way up to the scribe line uh, just to tune it in and uh, give a sort of nice bit of key for the grout but um, I'll do another video for the external cut um, I hope that helps you uh, it certainly would have helped me Lots of videos there, how to cut paviors, um, but they're much more straightforward. So, good luck.